Welcome back, everyone, to Inside the Forest. Dave Cottingham here with Hannah Burr. Good evening, Hannah. Good evening. How are you? I am great. Uh, we are back for another week. Um, only a couple days removed from our last episode because kind of squeezing this in this week from being a little delayed last week. But we are talking big time about part six of Ahsoka, only two episodes left. Two more. Two more from this season. Uh, big reveals in this episode. I think we got a lot more than at least I anticipated. But we'll deep dive into as much as we can for that here in a second. Um, first and foremost, again, thanks to our patrons for all your support. Uh, really, really appreciate it. And we're actually getting a lot of feedback on there too as far as you know, seeing the shows and, and we were just, I was just commenting back to, uh, dark S and M who is one of our patrons about, you know, he, he was asking about where to comment and when to comment. And it, look, there is no right or wrong answer. We just, we'll take whatever comments we can get. Uh, we, you know, traditionally we're not, we're not asking for that kind of feedback as part of the show. If some of you that listen to this, listen to the Mandalore podcast, you know, we, you know, Martin on there really wants that feedback as part of the show. We just never really do that. But, you know, if we got comments from our last episode, those are usually the ones we we read. And and usually that, that means that those are about a week old or so. You know, we're just kind of reading people's feedback from our shows and what we talk about. But, hey, if we're getting them throughout the week, we'll take them. You know, we're getting some on, on Patreon because we're putting out these uh, f- these reactions to the episodes right away. So that works, you know, whatever. We'll read it. We'll, we will. We'll get it to. Yeah. And you never know. Comments. You never know what conversation that'll end up sparking. And you guys have put new thoughts into our heads. So we'd love to hear from you. Please comment. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, but like I said, I think mainly, I think people are interacting more either on the Facebook group or YouTube, Patreon. So, um, you can go there, but any, you know, send us tweets or whatever, whatever you want to do, we'll, we'll find them. Okay. Uh, I guess, you know, again, lack of news in the star Wars world right now with everything going on. Still, the strike is actually still going on. Um, we're, we're pulling for them to get this over with and, Mm-hmm. All parties, uh, you know, happy and engaged, and get some get some more content going. I mean, it's it's you know, obviously, obviously we support that. And we want the people to you know, the the workers to get everything that that they they need. But it does kind of suck for us because like we have no idea what's coming next. Yeah, it, it it might be over sooner than we think, though. Because there are rumors, oh. and, and I haven't really looked into it. I just kind of saw it fleetingly on social media right before hopping on to record this. But rumor has it, the writer strike may come to an end because there might be an agreement about to happen. Sweet. Now, to just the writers? Or both? I Once again, I kind of saw it in passing, so I didn't really get a chance to do a deep dive into it. And once again, you have to check your sources. You have to make sure that the yeah. article is actually true, all of that. Or the, uh, rather, in this case, it was a it was a video. Uh, so you, you have to check your sources. So that's why I call it a rumor. But if the rumor is true, I think that's great news all, all, all the way around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if it's not true, then... Shame on you for creating a post to give us false hope. <laughs> yeah. Like that not not like that never happens. Exactly. Oh, never. Never. Yeah, never. <laughs> no, uh that that would be great because I think, you know, I have read which is confusing to me a little bit, but I have read some entertainment articles where they're saying, "Oh, this movie's looking to shoot in the spring of 2024. This movie's looking to shoot January." It's like Wait a minute. How do they expect to shoot anything when they don't know if this thing's over with yet? So, I, I do think they anticipate this being over sometime by the end of this year. So, you know, be it be it like you said now or the next couple of months, I think it's going to end. But hopefully, it's both. You know, hopefully the both of them can come to the agreement and get back to work and give us some great content. Because you know, I'm dying to hear 
you know, about skeleton crew that's apparently supposed to be coming out next. And then you got the acolyte on the, on deck as well. So lots of good things there that we got to hopefully figure out and hear and listen to and things like that. So, okay. Uh, so there is that, um, What's that? I'm so sorry. You can edit this out if you want to. And I apologize for saying this, but last week, didn't you see an article saying that, um, shoot, last time we recorded, didn't you say there was an article that came out saying that, uh, the, uh, Taika, Taika movie. Yes. Sorry. His name escaped me for a second that his movie is now no longer happening. <laughs> well, okay. So that's good thing that you said that. Yeah. So yeah. So to clarify to everybody, last week or last episode, which was just Monday, right? I think. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Um, I had talked about a news flash that Taika's movie was still live. We got done recording and we were hanging out talking a little bit, and I <laughs> looked online and I saw a, way, a thing come about saying Taika's movie is dead. But, but I actually saw another article yesterday that said it's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> so which is it? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's like what you just said. Who's who's writing these things? Um, no, it's 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 very much. It's not you know. It's not one of them things where it's oh, it's definitely going to happen, but it's not completely dead. So he's not dead yet. He's, he's not dead getting, yet. He's feeling a little better. <laughs> So what I said last episode was technically true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am so sorry for confusing everybody with that. No, there. no, no, no. That's great. That's great. I, no, I remember you saying, oh, we have to bring this up next time. So. Yes. And thank you for doing that. But I forgot to tell you before that, hey, oh, th actually it's still alive. So yes, Taika's movie is maybe going to happen still. We'll see. But. Um, we will see. Don't know. We don't, we don't know. Um, but one thing I will say that looks like it's still on the horizon. Good segue, actually, you bringing that up. Uh, I, I saw an article that says two years ago, if you remember, they came out with this huge cinematic trailer for Star Wars Eclipse, the game. Yes. Right? So we haven't heard anything really for a long time, but... Apparently, an article is out. One of the game developers has been quoted as saying, the game is very much still coming. It's just taking a long time because they want, just want to get this thing right. Um, the group that... Uh, oh, shoot. I, I closed my uh, window that had it. Um, but the group that, that was doing it... Um, it's just like, uh, what is it called? Uh, it's right here. Uh, Quantic Dream. So Quantic Dream puts out, which I'm, I don't know. I haven't played a game of theirs, but apparently they put out very high quality video games and that's what it is. It's just the quality makes it hard, you know, take a lo little longer to get right. Maybe they just want to perfect it, which, Hey, I'm whatever. I'm fine. Um, but it does say, prior to this, the last update we got about three months ago was more of the same. Stuff was moving forward behind the scenes, but nothing that they could really show or talk about. This is relatively unsurprising, given the rumors that the game may be as far off from release as 2027. So it actually could be about four more years till we actually get this thing, but... So, so a couple of things there. First off, I am all about people saying, hey, we want this to be good. So so you're going to have to wait. Yeah, no problem. I'd rather do that than have something that's not quality, not going to do well. Supposedly, uh, people say that some video game environments, they just work people to death. Mm -hmm. and, they're, I've heard that. and they're trying to yeah. meet these deadlines. So... I almost wonder if this place is trying to create that work-life balance for its employees. And because of that, games just take longer because as you and I know in the business, and we, we're we not in the video game business, but even in the, in the 3D work that we're in, 
it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. It just does. So I almost wonder if maybe that's part of it. It's going to take longer because they want to treat their like their employees well. Yeah, I no, I definitely think that. Hopefully, that's part of it. Yeah, I'm hoping. Hopefully, that's a big part of it. But you know, when you get into the now, I don't know if they're using what most games use is the Unreal Engine. Oh, to to create you know the 3D environments and things like that. Hmm. It's it's that engine is getting a lot easier and faster to render. But the problem is, is it the what there's there's um uh, how do you say it? there's shortcuts around it though too right you know how right. if you have a 3D image and you know you're not so for example you have a scene say you're doing a scene of me and you talking outside of a house well if you know we're never going to go inside that house you don't have to render anything that's inside the house you just render the front of the house right right so so therefore when you you know if you you probably ever played a game where you walk over towards something and you can kind of get it, see into it and it's empty it's because they don't they don't they, you know you're never going to go there so so you kind of cheat the render you don't have to fully render out the image so which again it, it speeds up the process gets games out faster you know and then when you have like when you have skins like when you create uh, assassin's creed for example you have that same skin you just kind of repeat it and change the outfits and change the environments but the but the the, the platform is already there mm-hmm. something like this it sounds like i mean you're starting there is no other star wars game that you're, this is it like you're you're creating a star wars game from scratch and you're setting this thing and this this game is set in the high republic mm. we haven't seen anything from the high republic yet so you know, I, I think I agree with you. I think they're, I think they it sound, it feels like they have a good work life balance for their people. But then I really think that they're trying to, you know, render everything they can and not make any mistakes with this thing. So, uh, it's, it, it, it says here too, it says one of the big focuses we've had when we announced Star Wars Eclipse was to make sure it was clear that this was actually an action adventure game. That has all the elements that you would expect and want from a Quantic Dream title, which is intrinsically branching narratives, multiple playable characters. There's no game over. Anyone can die. Anything can happen. And the story sort of con- of continues so that those signatures are still there. But what we've been doing is more is even more ramping up our expertise in the gameplay arena. What's so, the name of this company again? Quantic Dream. I think there is a game out there. Once you start naming or seeing them, I think you're. I think one of them was very familiar. I, can't, <gasps> I, I don't think I've played it. These are the people who did Heavy Rain in Detroit. Yes. I don't know what that is, but you do, I guess. Heavy Rain is hand hands down one of my favorite games of all time. Really? Wow. Like okay. the the storytelling is brilliant. It also, like, to, to be honest, it helped me understand where the keys are on a game controller because one wrong move and the character you're playing could die. Like, huh. it's... It, and then that changes the whole trajectory of the story. Like, it, it, it's... So I'm what's really, it called? Heavy, oh, heavy Rain? And What's it called? Heavy Rain. I, I played the beginning of Detroit and man, that, that whole, anybody who's played Detroit knows what I'm talking about when I say that beginning scene is a very difficult scene to play. It's just, it's heartbreaking. Um, but Heavy Rain, such a great game. I highly yeah. recommend. I'm infinitely more excited for this game. <laughs> Nice. Okay, Holy good. Sm- they can take all the time they want. Even if it doesn't come out until 2040, I will be okay with that. That is fine. <laughs> take all the time you need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they did... Yeah, here, so yeah, it looks like the one of the first ones they did was called The Nomad Soul, 
which was on Windows and Dreamcast, and then they did Fahrenheit. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember Fahrenheit. I don't think I played it, but I remember that. It was on Xbox, PS2, PS4. Heavy Rain, like you said, and then Beyond Two Souls. Beyond uh, colon Two Souls, and then they did Detroit. Did you say you played Detroit? I played the first little bit of Detroit. Detroit, yeah. And but oh, Detroit oh, oh. calling become human, and then mm-hmm. yeah, Star Wars. Uh, then Star Wars. So yeah, since since 1999, Star Wars Eclipse will only be the sixth game that they put out there. So that tells you right there they spend a lot of time developing these things. Yeah, and it's a good thing. It is a good thing. So uh, I'm not well. You, that you. Just seeing your face, I'm I'm more even more excited about this too. I'll have to check out some YouTube clips of those games. I want to you see. You should. They're... You should. So the quality now. Now you know. Heavy Detroit? Rain was 2010. I mean, yeah. So Detroit was five years ago. That was 2018. The quality of Detroit visually from five years ago, holy smokes, is all okay. I gotta say. I when I was playing it, I'm like. Oh, so this game came out recently, and my husband's like, no, this came out four years ago. I was like, what? Yeah. Okay, I'll go check those out. All right. I have not really done the research and looked into those games, but uh, you got me curious now. <laughs> They're so, so good. Anyway, Star Wars Eclipse. We can expect that, hopefully. You know, I mean, sounds like it's not. It's still about three or four years away, but we are getting, you know, Outlaws next year. Mm-hmm. which is open world, which means I can spend four years playing that until this game comes out, I guess. Or 20, <laughs> however long it takes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, uh, let's get into talking about part six here of Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. So this is, I thought this was pretty crazy. I don't know if you saw this, Hannah. I forgot that I was going to, I forgot I should have sent this to you. So the title of well, no, I, I won't say that yet. So, in at Star Wars Celebration last year in 2022, mm-hmm. was it last year? Yeah, it was last year, or was it this year? No, it was last year. I think it was last year. <laughs> Can't Everything really just where. the pandemic. If if it's done anything to all of us, it's changed our sense of time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I believe Star Wars Celebration was this year. I think it was, I think um, it was this year. Yeah. So you know. Anyway, the uh, the great uh, Dave Filoni was at Star Wars Celebration, and there was a clip that's floating around online right now because of this recent episode. And they asked him because they were talking about Ahsoka, obviously, and they were talking about you know the show coming out. Did you see this? I saw it. I saw, it. and I it wasn't it Dave Filoni saying, "Oh, we didn't talk about where Ezra was." Well, he said, you know, yeah. the crowd is like going crazy and and I guess he heard somebody say, you know, where's Ezra? And he says, oh, you want to know where Ezra is? And everybody's going crazy. And he's like, you want to know where Ezra is? And he's like, he's far, far away, which happens to be the title of this episode, Far, Far Away. So he's basically telling, he's basically telling you that <laughs> when this was going to happen. That's what the clip was. And I think even StarWars.com is the one that on their Twitter they actually put this clip out. They said, remember, like something like, remember when? And it was phony basically telling us when we were going to see Ezra, which was this episode. So anyway, part six of Ahsoka, far, far away. Uh, for those of you that are our patrons, you saw mine and Hannah's reaction video the other day talking about, you know, just highlighting stuff in, in that we have. We'll probably repeat some of that, I'm sure. It's so weird that I, I half half time I don't even remember what we talked about. <laughs> it actually is. It's like vomit, so, vomit, vomit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in a way, uh, Hannah, go ahead. Your first overall reactions to this episode. So my first overall reaction was kind of disappointed, but I I wanted to sit with it and stew with it because I, I, last week's episode kind of felt the same, but. Then I got to a point where I was like, you know what? No, this is actually one of the best pieces of live action Star Wars television that we've received in modern history. 
But with this episode, the more I sat with it, the more I'm meh about it. Mm. And I, 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 I think I'm more meh because it's very easy to see where this is going. Everything seems very predictable. And I know it's another setup episode because we just finished a pretty big arc. But it, it just, I, I don't know, it feels... I'm not on the edge of my seat. I'm not like, what's going to happen next? Mm. Like with Andor, even really? though I know eventually mm. how Andor is going to end, every single episode I was like, well, what, what's happening? What's going on? What's going to happen? For this, I'm like, okay, it's pretty easy to see where this is going. Um. And also, it just made me kind of a little disappointed in some of the characters, to be honest. Okay. So it's a... Like, like what? Like a step what? back. Like, uh, for example, um, is Sabine really that stupid? <laughs> oh. To think that they're, like, they're not going to... I mean, she's smart. We see in Rebels, she's very smart. She picks up on people's words. And they've been very clear. We'll take you to Ezra. We'll sell, We'll tell you where Ezra is. Dot, dot, dot. And she doesn't pick up on the dot, dot, dot. And she's led them to Ezra. And when Ezra finds out, you know, he we're, he's going to explode in anger. There's going to be a zombie thingamabob happening with the sister, with the, with the night sisters. And Thrawn's going to get out of there. And Ahsoka's going to be there. Probably going to be stranded. And they got to figure out how to get back. Like... I don't know. It just, I, and the thing is too, is I didn't want Thrawn and Ezra to be in the same episode. I wanted Thrawn's intro to be stronger. I don't like, there, there's a lot of things that like, I, and I'm still trying to parse it out of it's, if, of it's, it's objectively, you know, like uh, what's going on with this or if it's just me not having expectations met. Does that make sense? And trying to di differentiate mm -hmm. between the two. Sure. Because, like, you haven't read as much about Thrawn as I have, which is a kind of a weird position for me to be in, because normally you're the one who's read way more than me. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. So, based on all of that, I'm like, okay, am I just, like, interpreting things differently? It, 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 am I just having the wrong expectations here? Or... Is this an okay thing to think and analyze, mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense? And you know me, I'm also an overthinker. So, you know, I stay up yeah. at night with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I feel I feel some of that. I think. I, I, I was very surprised that we got as much as we did in this episode. Uh, I, I, there was a lot. I mean, there was a lot. You know, we got Soka early on, and then she obviously isn't in the rest of the episode because she's still traveling. So this was purely about introing Thrawn and finding Ezra. Um, that was that was this what this episode was. It gave us, but like you said, I think this purely seemed like a setup, right? This is this is setting up for the finale. You know, we're getting we, the next episode is kind of the middle and then we'll get some kind of conclusion to this season and then the finale and probably, you know, some big hangover, you know, uh, to whatever we're going to get either season two or the movie or whatever. But I do think, I, I do think everything about it was pretty good. I, I, I I love seeing the chimera and how they reconstructed that and brought that back. Cause that was a I remember thinking that was a pretty damaged ship when it left at the end of seasons four of rebels, you know, cause it was not just the pearls that took it away. I mean, it was getting pretty much destroyed. You can see that they built, rebuilt a lot of that. And just to, just to clear, clarify too, cause I did see some comments out there on social media a lot of people saying, I remember seeing a lot of people mentioning they felt the, something about, like, they felt like the reunion between Ezra and Sabine was 
like why did it feel so uh how do i say it uh how they were, they were saying like you know they they felt like it was too over um not acted but over um over emotional because it wasn't that long that they haven't been seeing each other but just to clarify it has been a long time it's been over 10 years because some, I think some people are still counting it past Return of the Jedi, mm-hmm. but it's not. You got to go back, you know, five years before then. So we're about 10, 11 years. So it's been that long they haven't seen this guy. Now, you know, I, you can make your argument how Sabine reacted and whatnot. But I, I get it. But because, you know, I, I think I think for me, if I was there, I would have probably ran and hugged the person so tight the first time I seen him, right? If they were that, that close, which I, I, I do feel like they were close because I, I saw a lot of comments about t- that too is, oh, Sabine and Ezra weren't even really that close. Why is she so attached to him? And But that whole family was really close. I mean, these guys have been with each other and fought in the wars together for four over four years, over five, four to five years. And... You know, you just can't overlook that. They they are very close. And she's been wondering, as you can see, she pulls up his hologram uh, message still to this day. Again, 11 years later. So she has not stopped thinking about him, has not stopped trying to you know, necessarily find him, even though there's no way of knowing where he is until this whole scenario comes up. So, So that part doesn't bother me. Again, I think the only the, I'm tr- truly the only thing that really I'm I would knock on this episode is strictly is strictly the still the look of Thrawn, even though <laughs> I can live with it. I just I just feel like I don't know. I just I just feel like the imagery that we've been introduced to Thrawn. In, in like the novels, which they created live action versions of him to promote the novels. Mm-hmm. Like those are incredible. I mean, that's what you, that's how he de- he's described in the books. That is how he, you know, looks technically in the Rebel series. Um, so he, obviously his voice is who he is. I mean, that's who voiced him in the Rebels. So it does sound exactly like him, but uh, I would have, if I were directing this, I would have casted probably somebody that, you know, resembled more of what we saw in like those book imageries. But again, I, I you know, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't take me out of the show. But um, when I, when you say like the, the entrance was a little underwhelming, um, that to me would have been a lot more powerful if he would, if, if, if he would have looked a lot more powerful. For me, it would have been very Thrawn like if I, I don't I don't know Balin Shin and Morgan were in a room and they were talking and all of a sudden we hear the voice. One yeah. of them turns around and he's there. Like that to me is a Thrawn entrance. But people chanting Thrawn, like, come on. Sure, he's arrogant, but he's not. What's the word I'm looking for? He's not a narcissist. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's arrogant, Mm -hmm. and he does think he's the smartest guy in the room, but he's not a narcissist. So, also, I don't mind dad bod, uh, I don't mind dad bod Thrawn. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I, don't, yeah. I don't mind dad bod Thrawn. I guess, like, I guess 10 years like, away oh, on another planet changes your, changes your appearance. You know, stress, stress will, um, you know, will, will do things to your body and uh, can cause weight gain. And, you know, maybe, um, maybe when you're bored, you just kind of like lax a bit on your workout routines. And, you know, one thing leads to another and age is a thing too. Metabolism slow down. Yes. Maybe. So, yeah. I don't know. That's where my mind went. I'm like, wow, time has passed. That's where my mind went. It was, t- to me, it was everything surrounding his entrance that made his entrance weak, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't, 
you weren't thrilled about the yeah the whole army of whatever they are they don't they're not probably stormtroopers or i don't know what they are yet they're probably zombies too i mean let's be honest probably probably zombie stormtroopers yeah um so yeah and i mean something's keeping them together because they got like red gaff tape all over them and, you know, when you live with a bunch of zombies with uh, death constantly on the mind and whether one is going to turn on you right away, that 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 stress, man, it goes straight yeah. to your gut. <laughs> it does. It does. So, yeah, anyway. Thrawn is, yeah, Thrawn is Thrawn. Um, and thankfully, he sounds like him because that would have really took, took me out of it if it didn't, if it was like a whole different voice. But uh, but yeah, he's there now. What what do you make of what do you make of the involvement of the Night Sisters? Because I I never saw that coming this in this series. Like I never thought no. the Night Sisters would be involved. Because to be honest, I'm you know obviously they were a big part of the Clone Wars, but I don't believe I don't remember the Night Sisters ever being part of Rebels, right? Well, I never brought them in. I don't think. No, but they are a huge part of uh, the Jedi video game series. Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor, the book Jedi Battle Scars. They're a huge part of those books. And I actually think that's a... I'm really tempted to say that's a planet that you go to in Jedi Fallen Order. No, you don't leave the galaxy. Or, or, okay, then maybe it's Jedi Survivor. I swear we probably go to that planet at some point. I can't remember, uh, but we, we definitely no, not, visit not. a sister's temple. We definitely visit a si- sister's temple, which is very similar to the one we see in this episode. Mm. Mm-hmm. Which is why whenever they were getting the loot, which are caskets and crits... That's what makes me go, okay, Marek or Maroc, however you pronounce their name, uh, it makes a lot more sense now. Right. Jedi yeah. versus zombies brought to you by Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bay, why you went there, huh? Yeah. Why not? Explosions, man. Let's do it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if we're going to have zombies. Big action. Big action explosion. No, yeah. Very, yeah, very interesting. I think they needed... Um, I obviously think they needed a way to communicate, right? How else would Morgan hear the calling? So it makes sense that you would get into the whole Night Sisters and the magic and dark magic and things like that. I guess. I don't know. Like, to me, I just was like, oh. Like, that did take me by surprise. It was just kind of like a, oh, moment Mm -hmm. of, oh, okay. Sure. Well, yeah, it's it's cool. I mean, it's it's obviously neat to see any kind of history mm-hmm. of characters, and you know, we we got a pretty decent amount of history from, like you said, the video games, the Clone Wars regarding you know, Dathomir and Mother Talons and the Night Sisters. Then, of course, the Asajj's backstory had a lot to do with that, and uh, Savage Opress was a Night Brother, so. You know, you, we got a lot of history of Dathomir, but to see that the Night Sisters actually expand beyond that and even expand to a different galaxy uh, is pretty crazy. So nuts. Yeah, and and obviously Thrawn has used them uh, to get what he needs and to find his way back. Which. I actually think it's really, really interesting because I I really wonder if the one of the big twists we're going to get at the end of this is we're finally going to learn if Thrawn is Force sensitive or not. Not that he wields a lightsaber, but he can do other things with the Force. Because that, that mm. that's a huge debate that goes on is whether or not Thrawn is Force sensitive based on the fact that people have all of these plans and he's able to nail those plans down to a T. 
Uh, it makes uh, people uh. think, oh, is he poor? Because that's a huge thing with the Chiss. Um, for those of you who haven't read the books, uh, the Chiss uh, in girls ages, I think, 8 to 14, possibly as young as 6, they have something called the uh, third eye, right? Third eye? Yes. And mm-hmm. it's their ability to see into the future to anticipate what their ships can run into. So these girls are trained to essentially guide these ships through a form of hyperspace so that they don't run into anything. And as we've seen in The Last Jedi, that is very catastrophic. Um, So whenever a ship runs into something with hyperspace. So there's always, there's this huge debate as to whether or not Thrawn has this third eye. And it's, it's a little weird because they only find it in females. It goes away supposedly around the age of 14, which is when these girls retire. Um, so that's a huge question. So my question is, is he eventually going to be force sensitive? Um, and the other thing with all of that is, is that because he seems to be, he always also seemed to have a weird connection with these girls who saw into the future. And I won't spoil for you as to why another reason that may be, but I think another reason is that he's constantly thinking about the future. Um, And I wonder if that's why he's so attracted to the Night Sisters is because they they have that Mm -hmm. foresight. So it reminds him a little bit of home. It reminds him of that third eye and he find and as you read in the original Thrawn trilogy, not the EU version, um, he's when he runs and he works with Anakin, he's very right. fascinated by the force. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if that's why he clung so tightly to the Night Sisters. That's very true. It could happen like that, yep. So that could be why they added them. It was another aspect of the force that was very particular to foresight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would, if it wasn't them, it would have to be Jedi or Sith. And I think, you know, you have to kind of get away from that because they're not around in this time period. So. Right. Yeah. It make complete sense. So what's your, yeah. So we're, What's your feelings about the, you know, the Ezra return and what he, how he's been doing? I like they gave him blue eyes. They yeah. didn't pull a uh, Daniel Radcliffe with Harry Potter where Harry did not have <laughs> Lily's green eyes. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, as I said before, I personally. I wish that Thrawn and Ezra were not revealed in the same episode. But but that that's a personal wish, you know. That's not something that I can, you know, take a mark against the episode for. Mm-hmm. Their reunion didn't bother me either because I always thought, even while watching Rebels, I always thought Sabine had a crush on Ezra. So her trying to play it cool and let him make the first move made sense to me especially with how long so that didn't bother me i think what bothers me and this is the question in my mind is if they had coordinates to where ezra was and he wanted him dead all this time and we're talking over a decade why didn't thrawn just go kill him he has the army clearly yeah, or yeah, maybe somehow, maybe somehow Ezra has just avoided him somehow. That's the only thing I can think of. I mean, they there's obviously that. there's obviously a lot of life on this planet. Yeah, you know, um, there's these whatever these bandits or nomads out there that they that Sabine was fighting. There's there's little creatures that Ezra is living with. I mean. It sounds like they're moving a lot and, you know, so it's not, I don't know if it's that, uh, that Thrawn, yeah, just couldn't, uh, just didn't want to do it. I don't know if he could find them to do it. Maybe. Um, On the note of the bandits though, and of the people, I do love the, 
essence of Japanese culture that was going on with all of that. Like the fighting yeah. style was very reminiscent and, and I'm by no means an expert. So if this is wrong, I deeply apologize. Uh, but to me, it was very reminiscent of uh, samurai fighting and mm-hmm. samurai styles and st- samurai uh, attire. And then even just them going into that little village felt just some of I've been to Japan, so it, it felt a little bit like that culture was there. Yeah. I, I don't know if anybody else felt that, but um, I thought that was really, really nice, actually. Mm-hmm. That, you know, they're, they're not the same. And I think that's also what I appreciated about this planet is that it didn't feel like a similar planet we've been on before. Yeah. Because a lot no, of it, times, did, it felt very ancient. Yeah, because a lot of times we go to a planet and we're like, oh, this reminds me of this place, or this reminds me of this place. This planet is, this reminds me of dot, dot, dot. Like, there, I can't think of any other planet that we visited that's similar to this. Yeah. It, it kind of feel, well, it does kind of feel like uh, some somewhere you would visit in, like, Jedi Fallen Order. Yes. You know, that seems ancient and old and has the ruins and things that you're trying to discover no i you know and i it, it, yeah and it's it's pretty awkward it's pretty awkward to think about what what both thrawn and ezra have been doing for 10 11 years yeah, you know? what I mean, obviously you i don't know i mean obviously he's been building this star destroyer back he's been building this army i guess apparently but and maybe maybe they don't have the stars charted in this galaxy i guess but i yeah so i guess he couldn't leave to go to even to another system um maybe the hyperdrive so he, he is damage? probably stranded there yeah it could be he could be stranded there but ezra i think you know i, I thought that was um yeah like you said I, I thought they were gonna end it to where she doesn't see him yet until maybe the beginning of the next episode but but it seems like the first part of next week is going to be, uh, you know, a pretty big standoff battle between Ezra Sabine and Shin and, and Balin, uh, which I think is going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be really good. Um, I don't know if uh, I don't know who survives out of that fight. Because here's the thing, and you don't you don't have to you don't have to go there if you don't want to. But the the big thing I'm still questioning is Balin. Like, what is going on with him? I I, I have no know. idea. I, the closest thing I can come to is that it's one of the one-off Sith cults, like the Knights of Ren. Oh, yeah, you did mention that. That's interesting. That's the only thing. I th- I think Shin is going to flip. I oh. think I think she's going to flip. Um, and unfortunately, didn't the actor who plays Balin pass away? Yes, Ray Stevenson passed away. So I, I love what he's doing. I really hope they don't have to recast him if there's a season two for season two. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. a big chunk of me hopes that he does die in this season. And if he doesn't, I hope that they reference a conclusion for him of some sort. So I, yes, I think so. But honestly, if someone's going to die, it has to be someone of high stakes. Ahsoka one theory is that she's been trained in forced ghostness. Um, but I feel like if you're going to pick someone to die and pick someone of the highest stakes, it's Ezra. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I see major, major, uh, what is major, um, uh, blowback. On that one, to if you wait all this time to bring him back and then he dies, that would be 
horrible. Um, I'm just saying, if you wanted to pick someone with high states, it's Ahsoka or Ezra. Yeah, I definitely ain't going to be Ahsoka. So, I mean, it could be Sabine. It could be Sabine. But I don't think anybody, I don't think he's going to kill anybody off. I mean, honestly, if anybody, like you said, Balin could could get killed. But I think I think there's something there with him. I think there's, mm-hmm. you know, he's he's talking about. Now, I did, I did hear a rumor, which I think completely is a rumor. But, you know, how he keeps mentioning there's something that's keeping him here, something that's calling, you know, he's like, do you feel it? Do you see it? Rumors out there that this could be the origin of, which again, you, you know how fans go and they try to, but there are a lot of, uh, what well, not a lot, but what I've seen a couple articles talking about that this, this feeling and this, uh, this calling that he's experiencing could be the origin of Snoke. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't go Why? there either. I'm... Yeah. Well, I yeah. Not not in a different galaxy. I wouldn't go there. It's not gonna. No, but do we know if he was an inquisitor or not? If Balin was, we don't know for sure. I don't, I don't think. Okay, because if he was an Inquisitor, then he would have had contact with Palpatine. So then I would be like, okay, I mm. I could see where you're going there. But if we don't know that factor, then because in Rise no, of I'm the Red saying, Blade. I, I, don't think, I don't think they're saying Balin is Snoke. Right, right, right. But like the origins of Snoke and all of that. And for even it to be out. Oh, okay. Well, anyway. Like what's, what's calling him or this power that's. Could it be Snoke? But I don't think so because this is again, this is in a different galaxy, and I don't think they would go there. Because the the Night Sisters are there, it could be that this is just a dark side planet that just has naturally more dark side tendencies. So that could be what's calling him. Very much so. Totally agree. But Snoke, I'm Yeah, I don't Mm. I don't think so either. If it is uh, Snoke, I'll leave my hat. That is what I will say. <laughs> yeah. Again, I think that's a lot of that's just kind of wishful thinking from fans and wanting to try to make connections where it doesn't exist. If we learned anything, remember, it could just be a Maroc. It could just be Maroc. <laughs> Maroc could just be Maroc. Yeah. That's the next shirt, right? Maroc yeah. is just Maroc. <laughs> that's the next shirt we'll make. <laughs> yeah. Maroc is just Maroc. Maroc. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. It's not uh, a boulder. It's a it, Maroc. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, two more episodes left. We'll obviously be back next week talking about chapter seven. Then next week, chapter seven, or not chapter seven, but they, they do part seven. I will be, that'll be my last, that'll be our last episode. We'll have to possibly wait a couple weeks because I'm on vacation the following week when the finale is out. Yeah. So we'll, you know, some time, we'll have some really good times to let it sink in and record, but we'll do the reaction. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking we each do our own reactions and, and po- post them on Patreon because I can still do that really quick. I can record that on my phone. Oh yeah. So I'm definitely still going to watch the finale when it comes out. Yep. I'll be back at the room by then <laughs> watching me, me and my daughter, Sam, will be watching. Uh, so, you know, again, this month we've been kind of talking a little bit about new Republic stuff. So, um, I did have a question for you about that because I wanted to kind of keep the theme a little bit. Uh, New Republic, you know, again, this is this is the New Republic era. We've been talking a little bit, little aspects of it here and there this month. I was thinking too as I was looking more into it, and 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 you know, just thinking back through all of Star Wars. 
and again, I, I know this. I know. Trust me, I know this is a whole fantasy world, and stories have to be written and things like that. But obviously, there's a lot of conflict that goes on in the Star Wars galaxy, right? Constant conflict. Every era that we've witnessed has some kind of war or some kind of battle or just some kind of unrest. So my 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 kind of question that I was thinking about, um, you know, and we and every time there's a new show or a new game or a new book, it, it seems like we're introduced to another location, another planet. So we're talking thousands and thousands of systems, right? We kind of knew that going in that the galaxy is made up of thousands and thousands. There's, I think, I think they even have mentioned there being two or three thousand seats in the Senate you know, that represented all these worlds. I guess, Hannah, the thing I was thinking of is, is a galaxy that, 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 that that's that big, is it, even, is it even possible to, at all, to govern and keep peace? Because it feels like there's always going to be some kind of, like there's always going to be some, empire or there's always going to be some rebellion there's always going to be i mean i just don't know whenever we would see an era in this galaxy that doesn't have a war going on and if you think about that if you think about the small scale of that just to our own planet i mean how much there's been fighting going on in this planet since the beginning of time right so it's technically inevitable i mean it's but how do you govern how do you govern a a location like that where you can't even, you know, reach out and, and, and be everywhere. I mean, I, I know the, the Jedi, that's what's interesting to me to, to really look back at the dawn of the Jedi or even back at the high Republic or even the old Republic. Like how much did, how much peace did they actually, you know, demand and how much did they actually maintain? Because it didn't seem like the government was doing much of that. It just seemed like the, at the time the Jedi were the, the point of that. But I don't know. I just kind of got me thinking about, you know, all the conflicts that we're, we're witnessing and dealing with. It's, it's, it's just, it just seems like it's something like that vast is just impossible. Well, short answer to your question is yes, it is impossible. Yeah. And no, I, The more and more I think about that Senate room and how many of those balconies are there, the more I'm like, how the heck is one person facilitating all of this? Uh How also it makes me go, wow, those are the most patient politicians and polite politicians I've ever seen in my life. Because if you if you think about all the problems that go on just in our city, I'm not even talking about our nation. I'm talking about our city. You would have people talking over each other. It's amazing that they don't do that. And I know that's because it's, you know, it's it's for movie's sake and all of that. But in real life, no, I think it's absolutely stupid, in my opinion, to think that you could do all of that. Now, if you're someone like Palpatine who who uses threats as a way to control people and fear as a way to control people, okay, sure. I could see someone doing but that, that. But that didn't even work. But that didn't even work. Exactly. So, like, <laughs> and I don't even know what this New Republic, if they just picked up where they left off or if they splintered things off more. I don't think they did, which is why very easy for the... Um, the first order to rise like it's it's too much it's realistically it's just too much so yeah i think i think you're right i think that's that i think you just hit it there i think i think the new republic's mistake was that you know mothma was part of the the republic when it fell and so it seems like yes it seems like she's just trying to pick up where it left off and not realizing 
the corruption that destroyed it. And yeah, you can't expect you can't expect people just to fall in line with the the peace that you're trying to just talk about. Um, mm -hmm. Because there is, like, like we witnessed in this la like two episodes ago, right, where you had these uh, these workers that are imperial loyalists that you would never know, and it's not that they are loyal to the. It's like exactly what Ahsoka said. They're not loyal to the empire. They're loyal to money and, and greed. Whoever's paying them. So you can't. How do you? Yeah, you just can't solve that with uh, a government you think worked. Well, it's it's the definition. It's the definition of insanity. You mm -hmm. try the same thing over and over again and expect a different outcome when it's always the same outcome. Right. Yeah. So maybe if they split it up more, the story would be different. Yeah, that's possible. Maybe, and it always seems like. Again, it always seems like the outer rim worlds are the most neglected. You know, they're kind of run by crime syndicates. Yeah. And I've always wondered why, the, you know, Republic doesn't put any more presence in there, or even the the, uh, the Republic before. So I don't know. It, it, yeah, and I get it. It's it's uh, it's a lot going on, and you know, you, it's hard to it's hard to um, police it all, but. Um, but I just got, you know, I just got to thinking like examples, you know, these people that these, uh, these people that live out in the outer rim and they're, you know, you can walk into a bar or a cantina or whatever. And easily, it seems like there's always conflict easily get into some kind of shootout because, you know, someone's looking for money or somebody owes you money and, and, People are just getting killed all the time. Yeah, um, it's just weird, you know, thinking that that that's kind of the norm then in living in that underworld then. But anyway, I got. I don't know. I just something, something I'm think something I think about something that, you know that's just where my mind goes sometimes. My Star Wars mind. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> mine goes to what would my anyway, hair look like? Do I? I said, mine goes. Where would my lightsaber look like? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, I am, I am. If, if, if no one can tell by the way I talk on this show over the years, like I, I've, I'm not a, by any means, a political person. Like I hate more than anything. I hate politics. You know, I just, I just care about. Yeah, I, I just care about safety and you know, let me be able to safety and freedom. That's really all I care about. But when it comes down, so, but I'm just so enamored with the, the Republic, the, the government of the star Wars universe, because, but cause again, how vast that galaxy is. You're talking about the governing the entire galaxy. And it's just crazy to think of. That's why I'm so interested in Mothma and her, you know, her character and how she's built. And of course, Leia and what she's tried to, to build and Senator Organa, um, uh, Bail Organa and things like that. So, uh, so anyway, I, I, I kind of like how, kind of like seeing and hearing those stories of them trying to figure that kind of stuff out. Absolutely. And you've pulled me down that rabbit hole too. So yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I'm as much as you, but I consider it more now when as before it's like, eh, it is what it was. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. We've got comments to go over here. Ooh. So I did. So I did post in our Facebook group, Hannah, if you didn't see it, about my thoughts about Thrawn's look. Mm -hmm. And we did get some comments. And I wanted to say, uh, so Sean put out there, agreed on both accounts. So anyway, here's what I wrote. It's a piece of it. Said I said, I'm not saying I don't like how Thrawn looks. I think it works with the series. But when I think of Thrawn, this is the image I always have in my head. And the image is from 
Timothy Zahn's book, mm-hmm. Thrawn, not his not his EU books, but like you said, the first trilogy. It's a you know his really sharp look and you know clean white outfit. And I said this version of Thrawn looks so intimidating yet calm, like his voice. I wish we could have gotten this in live action, but like I said, I'm okay with what we got in Ahsoka. What do y'all think? Uh, Sean writes back. He says, agreed on both accounts. He is also, I think, thick around the belt. He's been <laughs> stacking more in exile. <laughs> Dad bod, right? Dad bod. Uh, yeah. Uh, Amanda says, well, my first thought when we saw him was soft. So, and she got a laughing emoji. Uh, Martin said, yeah, we talked about this on the show. I closed my eyes and listened to him. Then I was okay with it. I actually thought his hair looked bad. So there's a couple of comments that are, Hey, there's a couple of comments that agree with me, Hannah, even though you may not. No, all I can think of is, so there's this thing floating around social media where somebody used AI to have George Lucas react to these Ahsoka episodes. It's not George Lucas. It's AI. It's very convincing, but it's AI. That's very good. And one That's comment he said was, oh, for a second, I thought we saw Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And I about oh, died. That was good. That was good. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's like, yeah, sorry. That's good. But yeah, no, I didn't mind it. <laughs> didn't mind it. Uh, okay, so on our last week's episode, let's see, Thrawn, mm-hmm. Attic mentioned, um, absolutely loved this episode, probably one of the best Star Wars content I've seen and had chills all the way through. Hayden's acting was so good and did a really good job of mixing Anakin from the prequels with Clone Wars Anakin. The actress playing young Ahsoka was fantastic and her interactions with and dialogue with Hayden was so good. I would love to see more of her playing Ahsoka. Totally agree with that. Yes. I understand some people's criticisms about the whole world between worlds thing and what the meaning of her final training was, but I was just happy to see them both interact with with each other that I didn't get too hung up on that. Mm -hmm. I think it was quite simple. It wasn't world between worlds, but more of in her mind or a vision type thing, and a lesson was was fight to live and she is more than representing death and war. Agreed. I think this was a good way to make Ahsoka be a more positive character with more hope and will serve well in future episodes. Overall, probably best episode of star Wars with great flashbacks and lightsaber duels. Uh, what more do you want? So I'm hoping next episode we get some Thrawn finally. Thanks Hannah and Dave for the great review. Yep. So moving on to some Patreon comments based on based on the our reaction video to part six. Um, okay. Ron Attic goes more. He says, uh, I really enjoyed this episode. I agree it was hard to live up to the episode we got previous, but we got Thrawn, Ezra, and some Night Sisters, which was awesome. I understand that Hannah I understand what Hannah is saying about Thrawn. But I really don't think Dave Filoni and other writers slash directors think of the novels at all, unfortunately. So mm-hmm. they're not going to make him as stoic or heroic as he appears in the novels. In Rebels, he is pretty much just a villain. So if you're just going to Rebels on Rebels, this his entrance makes sense. Agree with Dave through though and have to get used to the look of Thrawn as it's a bit different. Once again, Balin stole the show in this episode for me, though, and can't wait to find out more about his plan. Uh, you make an excellent point there. I didn't even consider that in Rebels, you know, he is considered a straight-up villain. He doesn't have this complex history that we get from the books. I, oh, that Man, that goes back to our whole conversation of what is canon, and there are different layers of canon, and... Oh. There's not really layers of canning anymore, um, but there are questions of how much, I guess, how much do they, how much are they actually working with each other to try to, yeah. you know, keep a character consistent? Dang it. But, you know, but I mean, he, yeah, he makes a good point that in the timeline, this is the first time we see him since Rebels. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. But you know, I think I think we'll have to see as we go forward here. But I think 
even though Dave, I think, had this vision of what he was in Rebels, I think this version of Thrawn is actually going to be more like the e like the original EU Thrawn trilogy. Oh, is what I think. That's what I think. I think that's what it's shaping. I think he's pulling elements from that storyline to make Thrawn. Because Thrawn was, again, it's been a long time since I even referenced those books and read those books. And I'm not a good retainer of the information that I read. But uh, I recall him being a lot more evil and villainous, right, in those books. Because he was the, he was the heir to the Empire. He was trying to reestablish... Mm-hmm. control uh which is not what again like you said which is not the thrawn we know from the novels um because he's not he's not a power guy he's just a strategy guy he's he's a guy that came into the empire and saw okay this is the controlling government i'm going to be a part of what's controlling you know controlling the galaxy and i'm going to lend myself to it and of course he had he met with palpatine and has had his 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 um his reasons but um you haven't read the third book in the throne ascendancy <laughs> series yeah, so i'm not right. gonna say anything okay well i'll get there <laughs> yeah I, but no that's an excellent po- i if they're pulling and i know that like heir to the empire is like a huge tip of the hat and all of that um we better get a mara jade we better get a Mara Jade. Yeah. I, I don't like. I, I I I'm not saying Mara Jade that we get in the books where she ends up with Luke. I would, right. but I would love to see a Mara Jade s character. Yeah, I, I definitely would too. Yeah, I yeah, definitely would too. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. One more comment from Darth s and uh, He says, love this episode. Speaking of arcs, I felt the last episodes have been an arc to show Ahsoka's Anakin issues and PTSD mm-hmm. resolved. I love these episodes, don't get me wrong, but there were two episodes that I felt didn't move the story along as much as I wanted. If we are getting multiple seasons of the show, then I'm fine. I just wanted more. Episode six gave me more. Gave me what I thought would take two or three more episodes to get. It was very satisfying. I have to mention, Star Destroyers are my favorite vehicle in Star Wars, just barely above the Falcon. When I see the Chimera, I jumped off the couch. That means something special to me. Makes me move. Equal episode is good. I had mentioned some things on the Facebook group. I could go more in depth, but really I was happy with all things we got, characters and knowledge. We got great mo- We got. We got great mothers, Ezra, undead stormtroopers, and Katsuji armor. Katsuji armor. I think, you know, obviously, like you said, Japanese reference, right? New creatures, a mystery power, the Chimera, a new planet, Purgo graveyard, more backstory. Just wow. Can you imagine it? Witches on whales. I like learning that the voice Morgan was hearing was the great mothers that answered that question. Chubby Thrawn bugged me slightly, but we, but who are we to judge? Maybe you are one of the few living beings on a planet full of the undead. There is more food for you. Maybe being stranded, beaten and bruised, and living with three witches caused him to stress eat. <laughs> you and I, same brain yeah. wave, same brain wave. Yes. I read an article that said Lars had toned down Thrawn's speech pattern for this just because he felt it didn't work in live action and it did in animation. It was barely noticeable, but there, all that, I still love the episode. For me, it was as good as episode five. I agree. I I think his speech was a little different, but it definitely sounded like him. It did. Yeah. And he says, Hannah, I feel you. I have read everything Thrawn is in. He is my favorite character in the books. Oh, Mark Thompson, how many books have you ruined for me? Nobody does the voices like you. Maybe we will get what we want on the next two episodes. Thrawn's got a plan. He always has a plan. Dave, regarding your comment, why didn't Ezra just hop on a purgle back? I have this theory. I think Peridia is just one stop on the Purgle's migration route. 
They may not even, they may not, they may have not been going back to Ezra's galaxy at that time. They may go there to die, but not just for the reason alone. If that were the case, then there, there are about to be a lot about to die Purgle when Ahsoka gets there because she is traveling with a big pod. Anyway, those are my quick thoughts. Act one of the new arc is done. Uh, what we will get in act two, I am excited. Thanks, y'all. I do like the idea of a Purgle bus station. Purgle bus station? What do, you, what do you mean? Like stop stopping? Like like they back? make a series of stuff. Like maybe every yeah. two decades they come around to the same planet. Yeah. 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 I, I, I get it that they go there to die, I guess. But I can't imagine them not going there just to travel there either, you know. But maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe they do go there to die. But I don't think they just make the route there to die. I think there's still, yeah, maybe. I don't know. But maybe the pearls that brought them there, they knew they were going to die when they went there. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think that's a, that's an interesting question. There's an excellent point made that Mark Thompson needs, like, the biggest shout-out of all with regards to these audiobooks. I mean, come totally. on. Absolutely. Totally. He's phenomenal. All right, that's uh, let's see. That's all the comments we got there. Thanks everybody for doing that. Of course, thanks everybody for listening and watching and supporting the show. Uh, really, really appreciate. It. We got some great Star Wars content right now. We got two more weeks of Ahsoka. Uh, Hannah and I are about to dive into some Beyond the Sagas. In fact, we have a Thrawn Ascendancy book we can do because I just finished the first book. So we'll talk about that. We got some comics we're going to be doing. So. Uh, check us out there. Like I said, uh, we're on Patreon, patreon.com. So into the force. We're going to go check out our tiers and log on there for some extra content. Of course, we're all on YouTube for our other shows. And then on the podcast, you know, get this every week. So go, uh, listen to any, um, uh, any and all platforms that, uh, that carry podcasts. Yeah, Anna, you, you good? Excited for next week? Oh heck yeah, let's do yeah. it. Let's uh, let's let's see what let's see what the next episode is. It'll be let's interesting see, to say the least. That's right. That's right. Let's see where this goes. Thank you as always. Thank you as always. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. May the force be with you. <laughs>